Hey, my name is Tom Stronik, I'm a filmmaker and photographer from Slovenia and today I want to share with you how I film cars and show you some of my editing techniques that I've used in my recent project I did for One Life Really, coming up after intro. Because I'm too much for the thrill of it, killing it, never not in a million things out one. Okay, so I've broken down this tutorial into two main parts. In part number one, I'm going to share with you how I get those cinematic car shots. And then in part number two, I'm going to show you three editing techniques that I've used in my recent project with One Life Rally. So who or what is One Life Rally? Good question, my friend. So let me explain in 10 seconds. One Life Rally is an event where 50 supercars, luxury cars are going to drive from Venice to Mamaya. And my task was to do a one minute long promo video for their social media. So let's start with tip number one, which is about pre-production. And the first thing you have to do in the pre-production is to get to know your client. Basically, you want to get as much information from your client as possible, or even if you're just shooting this with a friend just for fun, you still want to plan out as much as possible. So what I usually do is go online and search for some cool car pics where I really, really like the composition or take some screenshots from the videos I like. I then print them out and I have them with me on location when shooting. First of all, because sometimes you're in a rush, things are happening fast, you have to get that shot and you end up forgetting some of them if you don't check your shot list. And the second reason is you will look much, much more professional, the client will like it, you will show that you're serious and therefore it's a much higher chance that he will want to work with you again because you're taking the project seriously, you planned out the story, you communicated it with your client in advance, so over delivering. One more really, really important thing. It's not enough to just have cool looking shots. You have to put them together in a story. People love stories, so storytelling is what will bring your video on the next level. Okay, so this was quickly about pre-production. Let's dive into the production. So you're out there shooting and the most, most, most important thing that I can suggest you do is to overshoot. Film as much as possible. Really guys, yes, you're going to have a lot more work going through all of the footage that you took, but I'm telling you, you don't want to come back to the computer, start editing, only to figure out that you didn't shoot that or you don't have another angle to, to use here for better storytelling. So shoot as much as you can. One of my favorite things to do is to sit in the back of the trunk and film low angle with my gimbal. So I had my assistant Renato Babic drive the car. I was sitting at the back and getting this shot. And then of course you have to get those aerial shots, fly high to show the scale of the landscape, but also don't forget to get close to the car, fly low. I loved to fly here because there were trees creating the depth of the composition on both sides. And another shot I like to get is to tell the driver to drive against me and then I'm driving the opposite way with the drone as fast as possible. Now, obviously drones fly 50, 60 kilometers per hour, but anyway, you can speed up the footage in the post-production to, to make it look that the car was driving very fast. Just uh, keep in mind if there are any people because you don't want them running around like crazy. And you also want to sit in the car, drive inside, well, first of all, to drive in the car and enjoy. And second of all, to bring the viewer close to the action so he feels like he's there as well and he feels the adrenaline rushing through his blood. And tip number three is a very quick one. Film some details and edit them together in some quick sequence so you create an action and even more drama and intensity to the edit if that's what you're going for of course but i really really like to mix the close-up shots with some wide angle shots even with a drone so you keep the edit as interesting as possible and show as many different things as possible but this of course depends from your type of editing i like to edit fast paced cuts fast, pa fast paced cuts try to say that really fast fast paced cuts and i think the first few seconds are the most important ones. It's when the viewer is deciding if he is going to watch the rest of the video, if he should invest his time into it, or he's just gonna skip it. So tip number one regarding the editing would be that use some of your best shots at the beginning or create some ground for a really, really good story so that the viewer will want to watch it till the end. 
And now, let's jump to the computer to see some of my editing techniques. <laughs> okay, so let's talk transitions. I'm going to show you two editing techniques that I've used and you can easily use them as well. So, if you jump into the Premiere, the first one, uh, let me let me just uh, mute this. So the first one, let, let's watch it without uh, without the technique. It's a hard cut, like nothing wrong with it. With it, but if we use a light leak, it looks much better. So one more time, no light leak, and light leak looks really nice. Basically, a light leak is a source of light that they film in the studio. You can download them for free or buy them. I bought a package, I'm gonna link it below if you want to check it out. And you can use it really, really creatively to level up your production and make your edit much, much nicer. So here I used it as a transition. And if we look closely, I faded it for a couple of frames. And then when the, when the leak was the strongest, which we can see here, if you bring out the opacity, bring up the opacity, here was the strongest and then it faded out. So it looked really, really uh, nice. And I always play with the intensity. And also if you don't like the color, you can always play around with this as well. Of course, it really, really depends from the light leak itself. And now let's check the second editing technique that I use a lot. It's called the speed ramping. Basically, slow down the footage, speed it up, slow it down again. So you choose the clip, you go under time remapping, make sure the stopwatch is turned on, you expand, and then you come here and choose the point where you want it to speed ramp. So let's say I want the first car to pass really, really fast. So I create a keyframe by pressing this button and then I move up the scale, so it's up to 664. Just play around with how much you want it and then zoom in and play around with the keyframe length. We do this because we don't want the footage to suddenly go slow, but we want it to gradually decrease the speed and then gradually increase it as well. So as you can see now, the car comes fast and then it slows down and then uh, it slowed down a bit too fast. So I'm gonna do something like this. Okay, so as I said, you just play around and then when the, com car, when the car comes here, you create another keyframe, speed it up, speed it up. And now let's see what's happening. So fast, slow, fast. I don't like this keyframe, it's a bit too long. So I'm gonna shorten it. Let's see again, so fast, slow, and let's make it fast from here as well. again. So slow and bam. And tip number three is to bring your video to life with good sound. I don't know how to do it. Sound design. So as George Lucas said, Sound is 50% of movie going experience and I've always believed audiences are moved and excited by what they hear in my movie at least as much as by what they see. You don't always notice good audio because you subconsciously like it. But if there is a bad audio, trust me, you will notice. And now the One Life Really promo video I did coming up.